Hindu hate preacher booked for saying that Islamic schools should be blown up. YouTube, I would like to already clarify that I am reporting on the opinions of other people. Okay. We are simply conveying this to our audience with a critical lens. Okay. On September 18th, her favorite Hindu hate preacher, Yati, Nars Yati Narsingand, was booked by the uh, Al Arigar. Aligarh police in Uttar Pradesh, India, for calling for the demolition of a Muslim university in local madrasas or Islamic learning centers. Yati, the Dasna Devi temple priest, has openly called for violence against Muslims in the past. During the recent event, he said madrasas should be blown to bits with gunpowder and we should practice the policy of China and send the residents of the madrasas to detention camps. He also said that the Aligarh Muslim University should be demolished, quote unquote, using bombs. Yati stated that he is not concerned with the legal consequences of his speech. He was arrested on January 15th for calling for the genocide of Muslims and again for another inflammatory speech in April while he was on bail for the previous offense. A human rights movement in India, Citizens for Justice and Peace, said that it is, quote, dedicated to finding and bringing light to instances of hate speech so that the bigots propagating these venomous ideas can be unmasked and brought to justice. They approached the National Commission for Minorities last year concerning Narsinghanan's bigoted statements when he warned, warned Hindus that if they let Muslim plumbers, electricians, and delivery boys into their homes, they would fall prey to the, quote, unquote, jihadis. Wow, this guy, this guy is crazy. Well, I mean, if he's not if he's not worried about the consequences of legal consequences, just keep him in jail. Why is he still? Last time we reported on this guy, he was calling for genocide. Why is he free again? They keep on letting him out on bail. Like this was even less than a year ago. Like this was like a few months ago. Yeah, you can call out for genocides on on in India and then just go free. Like He's that? violated the conditions of his bail multiple times. That's my understanding. I'm no lawyer. And how popular is he? That's a good question. He seems to have a lot of authority. It's hard for me to tell as someone who's a foreigner because, like, I usually hear about him in the context of outrage and a horrendous thing. You know, and that gets a lot of coverage. So I don't, I can't accurately tell you how much of a following he has, but he does seem to be like a big figure who legitimately seems to have some clout, some sway, because he can continue to not, when he's like, oh, I'm not worried about the legal consequences. Yeah, because he doesn't get consequences. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. That's like a good he, point. I, I don't know if it's connections he has or the political climate, a combination of several factors, who he knows. But yeah, you know, he doesn't face consequences. And he's completely unapologetic. Like, he straight up does not care. And he's, he's one of the largest figures in normalizing this rhetoric. Would you I think get that's what's so scary to me, is making this normal. That's terrifying. Do you what do you think he would get the same treatment if he was a Muslim in India saying like that the temples go should go boom boom? Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm just asking. You're not seriously asking me that, right? Of course not. <laughs> what do you yeah? Yes. I, I, this is getting really dangerous. And we know like language like this has ha had an effect on a lot of people. Like we we saw a lot of escalation on the rhetoric and you were like, oh, this could lead to a lot of people doing some crazy stuff. And then people did do a lot of crazy stuff following the rhetoric before in India. Now, now the rhetoric is picking up in radicalism. So with the trend and the action follow up, you know what I mean? Like, because we had even an expert, um, a genocide expert, which I didn't know there's a 
we there's such a thing as genocide experts but we had the genocide experts and he was like india is like ripe for genocide so because of the rhetoric that is coming out of it and i'm guessing he was talking about stuff like this right yeah well I the, mean, the hate speech that he gave that yati narsinganand gave in uh Hardivar at the beginning of this year was one of the prime examples of that the, when that happened there were like two events that happened basically simultaneously um one was in Hardivar and one was in new delhi i believe and yeah it was the same rhetoric of we need to make india a hindu only nation and basically do that through whatever means possible and explicit oaths to take up weapons for the sake of maintaining or establishing india as a hindu only nation like i don't think you can get more fascist than that yeah i mean it's literally the definition of fascism yeah these people like there is no definition of fascism that doesn't fit what these guys are said one thing <laughs> it's so crazy and this is I mean, like a holy man this is supposed to be a seer a priest like I, it's just mind-blowing to me i think I mean, mm -hmm. yeah what i get the most freaked out about is the normalization of this rhetoric yeah it's it's that's why mein kampf is the 12th most sold history book in india so, is that I true mean, yeah oh wow mein kampf is the 12th most sold history book on amazon in india i mean and these people a lot of them think that they are they're aryans especially the northern yeah. india yeah so yeah 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah also they 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 take um it, it, they take uh the worst of uh, uh the worst countries like they look at germany they're like as mein Kampf has a role model they're looking at china's treatment of muslims as a role model um this is why they're so buddy buddy with the right-leaning part of israel as well i mean mm. they're looking at you know they're like they want an apartheid state that's what they like they're like can we have some of that here can we have like they're like we we always sympathize with the worst of every country every country as long as the the target the the target the people in in, in that country that is being oppressed as muslims they kind of sympathize with them right this is why it's sometimes hard to take seriously some of the message of support for Iranians that some of them that come out of from some of these Hindutva is mostly because it's anti-Islam rather mm -hmm. than they care caring for people, right? Oh, because 100%. If, yeah, because these are the, some of them are the same people who are endorsing the treatment uh, mistreatment of Muslims in China. They're like, yes, that's great. Wish we could do that in India, right? So if they say the same kind of people are like sending you like messages of support to iran are like this is just an anti-islam thing for you this is not about because you care for people so yeah it's disgusting yeah. it's gross yeah 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 so PK says, Let's, we should practice the policy of china you know only this thing that was recently investigated by the un as a crime against humanity like no big deal <laughs> i yeah. is there any awareness is there any self-awareness if people who talk like this or have any sort of affiliation to this, if this was, if the group that was being targeted was Indians by racists, or if it was Hindus, you know, targeted by Christians, same rhetoric, just switch the groups, would they see the problem? I, I think they don't they they are self-aware they just don't think it's bad they're like yeah i'm gonna i am cruel against muslims so what it's ju they think it's justified by the way um sergo is saying to be honest i'm all for anti-islam i don't see anything wrong with anti-islam yeah i know i'm anti-islam okay but i'm just saying it's just anti-islam because the reason why i'm anti-islam is because i am for humanity that's why i'm anti-islam okay but
But some people are anti-Islam, not because they're for humanity, but because they're against anti-Muslim. So if your anti-Muslim position gets you to anti-Islam, then I don't understand. If your anti-for pro Humanity position gets you to be anti-Islam, uh, then I'll endorse it. it. The reasoning behind why you're anti-Islam matters. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is against a people. This yes. is not about an ideology. That they sometimes put a little bit of a veneer on it to make it seem like that. But if you go, like, one step deeper, you barely even have to do that. It's clearly just we want... I mean, they to establish a fascist state in favor of our like civilizational dogma. Um, so Shriya, she's saying the same people who take China as role model are racist against Chinese. I'm not kidding. Yeah, That's you're right. true though, because That's China true. and India have so much beef right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, we should do what the Chinese do and also screw them. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good point. I didn't think about that. Oh my god! Yeah. All right. This is a, Israel is such a the main role model for a lot of Indians, Hindu, uh, you know, not Indians, but like these right leaning ones. Yeah. Do you think it's Israel sad. is an apartheid? Do you think Israel is an apartheid state? Yes. Which is sad because there's a lot of things I love about Israel, mm -hmm. but it's being apartheid state is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love you. Yeah, I love you, Israel, but you be apartheid. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Cut it out, please. I would say that's a pretty good thing to not love about the something. Yeah. yeah. God damn. Yeah. One of the reasons why I love Israel is because it lets a lot, it, it allows a lot of Israelis call out their country for being an apartheid. So that's one thing that you can't do, at least in Iran, right? So if you're an yeah. Israeli citizen and you want to condemn your country and call it out as an apartheid state, you get to do that. So those are one of the things that I love about Israel. That's unique in the Middle East. I know it's a low standard. We're like, oh, wow, you get to criticize your government. Well, woohoo, like... Like for Americans and Canadians and Europeans, maybe that seems like a low standard, but in the Middle East, that's pretty. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. PK is saying, but at least Israel has some sort of a liberal democracy. In India, we're losing that too. Yeah, but Israel has a liberal democracy for Israelis. Um, it doesn't have liberal democracy for all the people that it governs because Israel also governs Palestinians. So it go it's governing a people that haven't chosen them as a government. So towards Palestinians, they are not a liberal mm. democracy. Yeah. yeah. This is so funny. Mohammed is like, Armin is just trying to stay an undercover agent of Mossad. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Armin makes another pitch to Mossad. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm you serious still about work from Mossad, even though you consider Israel an apartheid state. Oh yeah, because Mossad is above that. I think the what? main thing. No, no, no. Mossad is the first for good. Mossad is part of the good part. Mossad has made the world a better place. Has stopped a lot of harm, right? A lot of the crimes um, from Israel is the main the. Parts of IDF is the problem, okay? Um, so many people in the IDF, and also mainly right-leaning pol politicians, and also um, Ju Orthodox Judaism spreading in school system and in the military and in politics. Those are the problems, right? But Mossad is often beyond the politics. And it also has stopped a lot of people from dying and also whatever problem with Mossad it would just be less if I join it so it would be an improvement <laughs> so I know there's problems there but I'm there to help <laughs> we're just gonna take this clip and include it on your CV as yeah. you try to apply <laughs> once again yes <laughs> all right oh all my right. god 
Um, yes, please, please. All right. <laughs> Just do it already. It's been years. Okay. I'm tired of begging. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.